killer gorilla, Jared Cannonier. He gets the unanimous decision victory against the ageless, the timeless wonder, Kelvin Gastelum, who actually tweeted after. He says, I think I won the fight. It was close on the global uh, scorecard for verdict. It definitely was close. But this is Kelvin Gastelum just doing the Kelvin Gastelum, man. You know, he's a tough outing for anybody, but Jared Cannonier was just a little more active. You know what I mean? He did outstrike uh, Gastelum, I think, or maybe Gastelum. Actually, Gastelum outstruck Cannoneer, but Cannoneer landed the harder shots, in my opinion. He dropped Gastelum, too, which definitely plays uh, plays into a factor, man. So I got to ask you this, AJ. Where, where, do we, where do we go with Kelvin Gastelum? Before we talk about the killer gorilla and how impressive his victory was, where do we go with the man? He was 1-5. in five. Now he's what? 0-5? Oh, oh or, one, you know, he's basically, this is a very rough outing, man. You know what I'm saying? This is a very rough stretch of fights. Where do we go with Kelvin Gastelum? I think he stays a gatekeeper. I think he stays, you know, top 10. I don't think he loses. He might lose one position, but I think he's, I still think he's a top 10 fighter. He arguably, like you said, he led the, uh, he led the, the strike count and arguably he had the more pressure of the fighters. This is actually one of the fights I was alluding to in my last comment where I said that the judging seems to be a little incongruent, whether, you know, the pressure of Kelvin Gaslam maintaining a foot, you know, on the gas pedal that whole time and being the one that's bouncing around, you know, dipping and dodging, putting the pressure on the killer gorilla, or should the points go to the, go to Jared Cannonier because he's actually able to do some, to do some damage. You know, he's actually able to put Calvin Gaslam on his butt, but then Calvin Gaslam just stands up like that, man, literally instantly once his butt hits the canvas, he gets back up. Very impressive either way. Um, I, I was a little, uh, a little, a little hurt on this one as well. Cause another thing with the big, uh, another thing I want to bring up with the big, you know, rounds of scoring is even when I was writing it down on my own, I'm probably being a little biased because I wanted Cannoneer to win. I think that kind of comes into play with the verdict as well. A lot of people just not really watching the fight, but more so just, I want this guy to win. I'm going to vote for him. Um, it could be into that. So we don't even know what the verdict, and I think that's a big flaw that comes into play too. But I was, uh, I, you know, this, the, the way the fight played out, it was definitely a Kelvin Gaslam style of fight, all pressure. He's an absolute pressure machine, especially with Henry Cejudo, the camp out there, they got going, it looked good for wrestling, but he just wasn't able to do enough damage to actually make it effective in my book. Anyway, yeah. what do you think, Derek? No, I'm with you. Real quick, I wanted to pull up the verdict since you brought that up, right? Um, And I do think that that does happen where some people will just be like biased. I just want this person to win, so I'm going to plug it in. But because that's the whole point of the global scorecard, though, is that you have so many people putting it in that it kind of cancels out and averages out across the masses, right? So they had it what? Uh, I have it right here. Uh, Unanimous decision for Cannoneer, 48-47 was the judge's decision. All three judges scored it that way. On the verdict, uh, Jared Cannoneer won 47.67 to 47.39 for Kelvin Gastelum. So it was razor thin right and they have uh cannoneer winning the round three and round four is that it how does how does he win? yeah yeah i don't even know how does he win if, if that's the case i don't know but basically yeah that, that's how they have it they have uh, gasoline winning rounds one two and round five so if that's any consolation this was much closer than the scorecard appeared what's that well i think it came down to the fact i was actually <clears throat> i was reading how uh, verdict has like their points given out mm-hmm. um and they i think a lot of more people are starting to score th- these fights is like 10 eights and stuff because yeah. the 10 7 they have on theirs at least uh you can say like how to score the bouts on their little options page um but that's when the one they say that that rarely ever happens where it's more so a 10 8 rarely ever happens so i think a lot of these verdict fans are really given uh a little bit more points one way or the other because i know i think i don't have the i don't you could tell me the actual point breakdown but i think the first one first round was razor close and then it started to really get more of a gap and then rounds three and four were an even bigger gap for jared cannonier or then round five was also a little bit closer so that's how he was able to actually outscore uh uh, calvin gaslam and not necessarily like we're thinking in our minds 10 9 10 9 you know the whole way down whereas if that was the case where uh, calvin gaslam won three of them then you would think oh like i mean he has the obvious advantage he won this one um so i think their point system it's don't get me wrong like I said, it's good, and I think it's a good idea to have the global scorecard going forward, especially because a lot of biases do come into play. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I think this one, uh, it, it was a hard one. It was a hard pill to swallow, but I do think Jared Cannonier did enough to get the dub, at least if you're thinking of a damage perspective going forward. What do you think, Derek? Well, I'm with you, and I, I will say, you know, the the old 
uh, verb verbiage or whatever you want to call it. Numbers never lie, right? They don't quite tell the full story, but the numbers never really lie. So if it's any consolation, once again, so this goes to show that like maybe you should have probably did better in your picks, man. Maybe some of these judges' decisions <laughs> kind of went, you know, made things go awry. But Kelvin Gaslam actually outlanded Jared Cannonier in rounds one, two, three, or one, two, four. Yeah, one, two, and four, right? So he he outlanded him three out of the five rounds, man. So it's it's just tough, man. It's tough when you have these close decisions, especially when you got these big middleweights going at it. And when you're at the top of the heap, like the Kelvin Gaslam's, the Jared Cannoneers, man, it's like, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Well, what are we going to do here? Nonetheless, this is a huge win for the uh, the killer gorilla, man. He looked sharp. He dropped Kelvin Gaslam, and it looked like he earned some of that respect. There was one point in the fight where I thought he was about to finish Gaslam, and I was like, wow, that would literally be the first time. However, Cannoneers, clearly one of the things that i think the man needs to work on is just the just the cardio man it looked like he was really slowing down uh and he was he put his arms over the cage and that's the sign of like oh i'm tired man that was like after round one and i was just like yo like hold on bro like I mean, adrenaline dump i'm not sure what's going on i will say those leg kicks are nasty bro those leg kicks that cannoneer throws are really really nasty but regardless cannoneer uh he moves on from the loss from robert whitaker he moves to 14 and 5 and he says he either wants a contender or he wants a title shot I don't think you're getting a title shot. I know that he was supposed to be in that mix, man, but uh, we'll talk matchmaking in just one second. That's the next section that we have here. So you got anything else on this on this uh, huge middleweight matchup? Uh, huge middleweight matchup, man. It was a good leg. It seemed like leg kicks were the name of the game. <laughs> and also the fact that Jared Cannonier, the sweat that was coming off of that man at the end of his, uh, you know, when he's talking to DC, that showed, that showed how much he actually put into the fight, man. So much respect to the killer gorilla. Yeah, man. I do have to say, I love the promo too. Cause he was like, yeah, man, I kill myself in the morning, an hour on the Aerodyne bike. I go work for 10 hours and then I go to the gym for five hours, rinse, wash, repeat. And I'm just like, that was his process from going to heavyweight down to middleweight. You know what I mean? And, uh, dude to sharp in middleweight, man. He's now, I think he's like five and one or four and one or something like that middleweight. So he, he's killing the game. And I will have to say folks, uh, if you are, uh, you know, wagering fans, which you are clearly, cause you're watching this program, I got a big, big, uh, prop on Jared Cannonier. I got it at plus 550 Cannonier to win by decision, man. Man, it was like the, it was almost too easy almost too easy man so listen <laughs> y'all gotta get on the game you know what i'm saying hit up the bookie you already know what time it is you know what i'm saying but uh all right folks um let's move on to some matchmaking 